Now, before Sandy hit, you were serving about 65,000 people in need here in both Nassau and Suffolk counties, is that correct? Uh, weekly, but we really service about 300,000 a year. Oh, I see, okay. Um, uh, it's a, in some cases a duplicated number, but we're serving about 300,000 people a year. And what happened after Sandy? Well, when Sandy hit, it really changed everything for us because though those 300,000 people who depended on the food and supplies and services of Island Harvest still remain. There are many, many thousands and thousands of more people that are now struggling, living on the edge in some cases, um, who really have become dependent on support from organizations like Island Harvest. Now, how have you been able to adjust? I mean, it's a, it's a massive shift. This is a game yeah. changer for you. It was a big shift for us. Uh, the good news is that I suppose the 20 years of our organization built us to this point and got us ready to be able to respond the way we did. Um, and so we were able to exponentially grow mm. instantaneously. How? Um, well, we used our model of the way we move food, the way we source our food, and we just multiplied it. Um, in the beginning, our staff was working seven days a week and sometimes upwards of 20 hours a day. Um, we were fortunate. We belonged to a really wonderful network of food banks across the country through mm. Feeding America. And we got a lot of support from them. So we had some professionals come in from out of New York. Uh, we had some trucks uh, loaned to us. And a lot of food came into us from across the country through this network. So one good story out of this is uh, America came to New York and helped. Yeah, there's no question about it. You know, we were the area, um, I think, of the country that always responded to other disasters across the country. Island Harvest has been involved in a number of different disasters. Uh, but this was the first time that it hit us, but hit us in, uh, directly. 100% of my staff was affected by this storm. Um, we had staff that left their families under five feet of water and without electricity or, or, or heat to come to the food bank so that they could make sure that we got food and supplies and services out into the community.